and we're now in the final bit, which is partnerships in healthcare, and Ghana as an attractive destination for German uh, businesses. Uh, we have a wonderful setup of panelists who are going to get into this discussion with us, trying to explain uh, why uh, we believe Ghana is an attractive destination, not just you know, selling Ghana, but also explaining um, what is available uh, to, to be used to increase the chances of success in collaborating with Ghanaian um, partners to set up business around healthcare in Ghana. I'd like to mention uh, that this event is organized in cooperation with the Special Initiative on Training and Job Creation, which is an initiative of the German Federal Ministry of Economic Cooperation and Development. The Britain of the brand invests for jobs and it's implemented among others by the GI. I must also remind you that this session is being recorded. Uh, certainly, so others could follow uh, later, especially those who are not able to join us um, right now. My name is John Amwesi. I'm an academic, medical doctor by training, and a researcher. Uh, the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology at the Kumasi Center for Collaborative Research in Tropical Medicine. And uh, I'd like to uh, start off by mentioning that when we think of uh, business and healthcare, partnerships. It's always a very interesting proposition that has been pursued in very different ways um, globally. Uh, there are several healthcare models which we know um, of and they have been apprised and discussed in various ways. Certainly one would argue that the healthcare system in Germany is one that has been largely praised for its equity, uh, yet not at the expense of, of the quality and the availability as opposed to maybe some parts of North America where uh, there is a lot of quality, there's a lot of technology, but the healthcare model may be such that there's still challenges with access and with equity. You may want to think of, of uh, the Asian sub-region, maybe Japan also, where healthcare models are really excellent there as well. Ghana has also been a leader in the healthcare sector with the introduction of the National Health Insurance uh, Scheme. Uh, which was really a game changer in the sub-region with regard to access to health care. And then we also have the, the private sector, which has filled a very important gap here in Ghana when it comes to health care provision. But so much so that we have people coming from across the sub-region to Ghana to visit some of our private health care facilities to receive um, the care that they need. Of course, when you think of it, um, for the private sector, it is really the focus on business and uh, being sure that um, there is a viable business opportunity. And this is why this discussion is so important that we are able to show how um, this is viable from a business perspective and it does um, meet the intended um, uh, benefits of healthcare being provided equitably and accessibly uh, to the Ghanaian population. And uh, with that, I'd like to say that our discussion will focus um, largely on the opportunities within the healthcare industry. We've talked about this to some degree, and a lot of insights have been provided by previous panelists, but I'll also have uh, today the, the panel for, for now also touch on this. And more importantly, what the practical market entry strategies and approaches uh, would be. It is very clear that not every business succeeds and a lot of the, the failure is an account of just not knowing um, how to enter and how to sustain your business within Ghana. And then we'd like to look at some uh, you know, partnerships in medical technology and pharmaceutical manufacturing, especially because these are two areas that the government of Ghana has indicated they are looking for business partners um, in, 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 in Germany and to partner with business uh, leaders in, in Ghana as well. And I must add that more recently, um, over the past two weeks, there has been talk about vaccine development partnerships, and so not just the pharmaceutical manufacturing of drugs um, and diagnostics, but also of vaccines. And then finally, uh, the, the financing aspect of things. How do we secure the funds to be able to engage in these partnerships, uh, which would deliver healthcare uh, between Ghana and German business. 
And I have uh, my panelists um, from the uh, Ghana Investment Promotion Center, Nana Nubia Ado, who is the Chief Operating Officer there. And we also have Mr. Eric Say, who's the uh, CEO of MedTech Chamber right here in Ghana. And we have Mr. Kofi Nsiampo, who is the President of the Pharmaceutical Manufacturers Association of Ghana. And I would um, introduce uh, very specifically um, uh, his representative, uh, who is uh, here with us today, right here. And she's the person of uh, Lucia Adai, and she is the Executive Secretary of the Pharmaceutical Manufacturers Association of Ghana. There's also Mr. Gerald uh, Guskowski, who's the Cluster Coordination uh, Head of the uh, GIZ, and also Ms. Alexander Klein, who's the Senior Investment Manager of the DEG in Germany. So we've really got it across the board from between uh, Ghana and Germany. And I introduce these uh, uh, panelists as they come on uh, very specifically. So I I'd like to uh, perhaps start with you, uh, Nana Dufier, uh, especially given that you are the Chief Operating Officer uh, of the Ghana Investment Promotion Center. And German businesses would be interested in knowing specifically what Ghana has put in place um, to make here what we call a, uh, an attractive destination for their business. Ultimately, they're interested in making profits and uh, they want to know what Ghana has put in place specific to the healthcare sector. Nana Dufi, I must mention, is an award-winning business and change leader. She has executive uh, level experience transforming and building global organizations uh, she can be described as well-versed in investment and financial operations, having started her career as an investment banker and investment analyst with Lehman Brothers, now, now known as Barclays. So definitely very well placed uh, to provide the knowledge that German businesses would need uh, to be successful right here in Ghana. Thank you for uh, that very kind introduction. Um, so in terms of um, the, the investment landscape, I, I think um, other panelists have discussed um, some of the programs that the government has in the pipeline, such as the, you know, the building of the 111 hospitals and other key um, infrastructure requirements that, you know, we, we sort of have come we now we we now need as a result of the pandemic and also um, historically we did have some you know sort of infrastructure gaps in the medical um, sector but from an incentive perspective there are many right uh, we have incentives on you know plants coming in we have incentives on um, you know from a tax perspective both from a plants perspective and also sort of as you're building your business there are many support systems that once you you know, you, you come into Ghana and you sort of start speaking to GIPC, we can introduce you to, depending on your area of interest. Now, if you have an interest in medical devices, there there's obviously different criteria for that. If you have an interest in, um, you know, manufacturing, we have different um, incentives around that, depending on whether you're thinking about sort of a local partnership or going at it alone. There are different frameworks for that. Um, um, from a, a, a government perspective, however, there are sort of key um, areas, the existing opportunities that, you know, that, that are currently being pursued, and we're obviously looking for investors for um, such um, opportunities. So uh, we like to, we like to position Ghana as um, sort of a medical tourism destination, and with that, we're looking at creating um, Sort of one-stop shop type healthcare facilities, um, so sort of like healthcare um, centers um, or cities. Um, so with that, you would have you know different categories. You could have manufacturing um, present. You could have um, sort of like a training um, facility for um, you know sort of training our healthcare providers. Then you could have the actual facilities for you know different types of um, ailments. Um, from a Ghana perspective, when you sort of if you're thinking about what makes sense, right? When you look at the dynamics, right? Um, you know, Fitch had a, a report out, you know, out uh, for 20, 2019 that basically showed that 
demographically, I think uh, the population, less than 5% of our population is um, the, is um, made up of the elderly. And we have north of, you know, around 25% being within the um, sort of the younger, less than 30 age brackets, which goes to show that, you know, we don't as a country, you know, we, we could do with infrastructure that enables are people living longer, right? Uh, and non-communicable diseases are on the rise, right? So there's a unique opportunity, one, from a production of um, sort of more affordable health care, um, both from a drugs perspective or from a sort of um, health care maintenance or treatment maintenance perspective. There are many opportunities there. And as you can imagine, you know, sort of like the 40 to 50 age bracket, you will find that a lot of the wealth um, is sort of um, concentrated there. So if you're looking at it from an economics perspective, it makes sense to invest in that um, in, in sort of services around that. Uh, the government is also looking at uh, sort of um, upgrading um, our the skill set of local manufacturers uh, on the ground. Um, they have very few players that are integrated. So to the extent that, you know, uh, investors are looking to both uh, look at a, a, an economically viable model. So integration is always nice because there's obviously you have an end to end. So there's an end market to um, um, you know retailer to for, for for consumers. We also have a lot of um, incentives around exports. Uh, we're also improving the infrastructure around our exports. I, I'm sure you, you're aware of um, uh, the incentives around sort of creating you know, improving our or upgrading our, you know, sort of sea, our ports, um, aviation and, uh, you know, our road network. So from a distribution perspective, we're also working on that. But um, from, you know, the, the incentives across the chain, basically, is what I'm, I'm, I'm saying. So and we don't have enough of that kind of uh, partnership on the ground. So to the extent that, you know, investors are interested in that, you know, there's a lot of, there's ample opportunity for that. Um, ICT as well as on the rise, uh, we've seen uh, surrounding um, um, countries have had a lot of technology investments um, happen in recent years. Ghana, I would say, is is sort of like um, more on the mid to lower end of the range. So to the extent that we can have a lot of investments around, uh, you know, sort of technology, medical technology, we're very open to that. And we are, you know, the different uh, frameworks to support that as well. Um, and, you know, from a government perspective, we're open to a lot of private public partnerships. So, you know, you, you, you come to us and you discuss, we can sort of talk about just different business models that could potentially work. At GIPC, I've had a few investors approach us and I'm in the process of helping them coordinate such, you know, um, arrangements. And so, you know, the, from, so when you sort of look at the framework, you know, from a, a cost perspective, incoming material, there, there are incentives around that from a partnership perspective, there's support for that. And, you know, from an opportunity perspective, when you look at the dynamics, it, it just, Ghana is really, really um, um, at, at the, sort of is well positioned for an investment right now. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's basically it. Uh, thank you very much uh, for that, uh, Nana Dufier. Uh, really uh, making a clear case uh, for Ghana being a, a viable, uh, attractive destination for for, for German um, partnership with with Ghanaian businesses. And I'd like to, um, you know, move to uh, Mr. Say Eric. Um, also, just so focusing on this, given the wide ranging experience you have as a pharmacist by training, and having worked as a med representative for a Swiss. Uh, company Roche uh, for several years and then uh, joining BD also working in Western Central Africa uh, for almost five years and then uh, working with Sysmix across the sub-region and uh, currently also you are the CEO of um, MedTech, um, MedTech Chamber Ghana. Uh, I'd like to find out from you, given what Nana Dufier said, um, what, what would you like to add to that with regard to the investment opportunities that exist in Ghana and what especially uh, the, the, uh, the investment um, landscape or should I say the, the infrastructure that has been put in place within Ghana to make it easy for German companies to partner the Ghanaian companies um, uh, to, to engage in, in, in business within the healthcare sector. I'm saying this particularly because 
it's important that partnerships are real partnerships that there's win-win everybody wants to win uh, but we can't have a win-win situation where the Ghanaian company is a winner and where the German company is a winner and where ultimately the Ghanaian population is also a winner and I'd like uh, you Eric based on your extensive experience to just comment on this. Yeah, thank you very much John and um, thank you for inviting me for the summit. Um, hello fellow panelists and um, participants of the summit, all protocols observed. Um, I think I wear two hats. One is the hat of a business leader for a German company registered under the GIPC in Ghana. And also as the president of the MedTech Chamber in Ghana. I will take uh, some few minutes to introduce the chamber and also to go into your question, which is how do we, uh, what do we need to do to create a win-win situation between Germany and Ghana in terms of partnership in the medtech area? So if you take us um, when we had the pandemic, let's say March 11th, 2020, you had the European Union having a meeting with the medtech industry to ramp up production for tests and medical technologies that were required for this unprecedented public health emergency. On the 13th of March, you had the Trump administration also having a similar meeting with the medtech industry in the US. Interestingly, on March 12th was, on, was when we got our first positive case in Ghana. This is to emphasize how important the medtech industry is in the medical field or in the healthcare space. Now for us as the chamber and also as SysMex as members, we were involved in many things because we always talk about COVID-19, but nobody really discusses what kills people. And it may come from things like coagulation disorders. And so we had to immediately deploy some of our coagulation analyzers into the teaching hospitals for diagnosis. It may come from kidney failures. And so we had to deploy some of our urinalysis analyzers to be able to diagnose and prevent deaths in these patients. But when you look at all the requirements from diagnosis to cure, you're talking about specific tests for COVID-19, PPEs, respiratory support equipment, global pandemic supply chain, research vaccine development, and even in terms of deployment of vaccines, you need medical technologies like syringe and needles. So I know since um, this morning's session, we've been talking about all these opportunities, Agenda 111, 1D1F, Ministry of Trade, Business Resource Centers, and then Africa Continental Free Trade Area. These are all wonderful opportunities that should attract German companies to come to Ghana to operate or even proceed to local manufacturing. But what do we need to make even Ghana even more attractive for Africa market entry and to become a medtech hub? I think that for the automobile industry today is here. We have VW and other companies producing because we have an automobile um, production policy. And I think that Ghana as a country, we need a national medtech policy. And if from this year's budget read by the finance minister, one of the highlights was on developing the national leasing policy for medical equipment. And I will correct that and say that we should we should even take it further higher to have a national medtech leasing policy because we are not only talking about equipment and devices, we're talking about high level technologies and big data. Now, critical success factor for this, for any business or any partnership is of course profitability for investors. So if we take a look at our national health insurance, we clearly need to have a diagnostic tariff for hospitals. This will help medtech companies setting up locally to see what kind of margins and let's say revenues are possible and what is the market, the true market potential. Another issue is tax exemptions. So today we have VAT and other taxes on medical devices, i.e. including even leasing. And this is something that we also have to review because it's a little high. 
And then the other, the third point, which is very critical for the national medtech leasing policy, is to look at how medtech tenders are done. Are we looking for cost per test? Are we looking for cost per patient? Are we looking for reportable parameter? How does this reflect the test volumes that we have? And this is very important because earlier on, I had other speakers talking about equipments which are lying in the hospitals, which are not being serviced. And this is because the business model, 70% of our med techs in Ghana have been on capital sales, where the hospitals buy the equipment and they are not prepared to sign service contracts. This obviously leads to equipment um, line follow, which I often call the medical equipment cemeteries. The fourth point is if we take agenda 111, where we talk about 10 key projects and its sustainability, we need a much, much more effective collaboration between the medtech industry players and the Ministry of Health, Ghana Health Service, regulators, i.e. FDA and Ghana Standard Authority, and also the academic institutions, as earlier mentioned. For future local medtech industry, that is where we actually go into production in Ghana. We need strong R&D partnerships. We also need financing and yet the effective collaboration between medtech innovators who have the strong R&D and our government institutions, i.e. Ministry of Environment, Science and Technology, Ministry of Health, and the regulators, as well as the academic institutions. And perhaps we need to even focus more on primary health care devices, which are used at the primary health care level. Thank you very much. Uh, Eric, thank you so much uh, for that. You touched on really um, uh, important issues, um, particularly looking at a, the possibility of a national medtech policy. And I'm sure the GIPC is listening into this. You made mention of uh, issues like um, the leasing policy for medical equipment, which, which I think is really a, an important consideration. The need uh, for high tech and, and big data uh, systems and capabilities. Um, you also made mention of this problem of uh, focusing a lot on the sales of equipment and not so much on the service contracts, which has been a, a big a big problem uh, generally. Uh, I'm hopeful that all these will be viewed as uh, potential business opportunities, especially given that uh, we should soon be having many more health facilities coming on board through the Agenda 111, which would mean automatically uh, more equipment will be needed, more uh, extensive service contracts will be needed, uh, there will be turnover of equipment uh, and, and so on. So I think a really interesting landscape um, evolving. And this is where I'd like to come to you, uh, Lucia Adai Intri. Um, uh, Lucia uh, has a degree in, in pharmacy and a master's in economic policy management uh, with over a decade of experience with multinational companies and diverse roles such as policy and governmental affairs management, uh, managing products, uh, key accounts management, portfolio management for Ghana and many more. So such her experience across the pharmaceutical industry is, is very wide. And this is where I'd like you to also uh, comment on some of the things that have been mentioned by the GIPC and then also by Eric with the MedTech Chamber and yourself as a, on the ground as the Executive Secretary of the Pharmaceutical Manufacturers Association. Uh, and this, this program is really focused on um, the partnership between Ghanaian business and German business. Uh, what is the positioning of the Manufacturers Association in this? And perhaps what has been your experience so far uh, with the GIPC? Thank you so much for inviting me and for the opportunity to actually speak to these issues. I think I have a very simple objective and the objective is to be able to tell you more about the opportunities that are available and to be able to position local manufacturing in a, in a strategic um, way for you to see it as um, an industry that you can partner or collaborate with us. Before I do that, I would want to speak a little about the pharma industry and possibly add a bit to what the speaker said. 
So uh, Madame Dufier spoke a lot about why you should, come, you should come to Ghana. I think one of the most important things is that Ghana is economically very stable and also politically very stable. And I think for anybody thinking of collaboration or business, this is very, very important to you as an investor. Um, also to add to what Mr. Eric said, it's important that you note that we have a lot of other incentives. And for local manufacturing, one of the incentives we have is actually VAT exemption on raw materials and packaging materials uh, because we don't manufacture it here. And to say that, that means that I've told you one of the um, strategic opportunities that you can partner with us on to be able to make raw materials available. But raw materials, I'm talking about the active pharmaceutical ingredients, the APIs, and then the excipients. Um, and even though we don't have VAT for equipment, for some of our equip equipment, if your business plan is uh, very robust and can benefit the government in the short, medium and long term, there's always a concession for you to have some VAT of it. And I'm sure GIPC has done a lot of work with us and we are very grateful for that. Um, to mention about the pharma industry, it's important to know that PIMA, which is the Pharmaceutical Manufacturers Association of Ghana, actually comprises mainly of the large and medium scale manufacturers, um, which would say that there are 40 members. For the small scale manufacturers, you're talking about 100 of them. And what we are realizing is that because of COVID and because there's, there's that importance for us to take care of the country and even beyond, uh, more and more companies are coming into the space of manufacturing because we are realizing that in the long term, that is how we can be self-sustainable. That's how we can take care of the country. Currently, we manufacture a lot of tablets, capsules, syrup suspensions, infusions, and we are moving into vaccines in the future. Um, over the years, in the past about um, 20 to 20 years, we've moved from 20%, 20% to a minute, please, so that I can turn on my camera for you to see me. I hope you can see me, yes. We've moved from about 20% to about 35% of the value of medicines that are manufactured in the country. And that is because we've had some investments and then we've had some incentives over the years. The value of medicines currently is estimated to be about $700 million. And then we have a compound annual growth rate of about 11%. And it's important that we keep on manufacturing and keep on growing if we want to be able to take care of not just Ghana, West Africa and possibly Africa. Um, West Africa is estimated to be about $6 billion. Um, and then according to a report I saw from Goldstein, um, it is projected that Africa will be doing, in terms of pharma market size, about $161 billion in 2024. I'm sure these figures are very interesting and investors will want to, of course, engage further about what they can do to position themselves. I would get to that. Let me speak a bit about the pharmaceutical manufacturers. So like I mentioned, there are up to 40 members um, and they vary in financial strength and then what they do. Um, like I mentioned, we are moving from tablets, we've moved on to infusions and now we are looking at vaccines. Some of our companies are looking at manufacturing anti-snake, anti-scorpion, anti-diphtery, anti-tetanus, um, anti-rabies and then anti-gangrene. We are possibly also going to look at other routine vaccines that are used by children because we are realizing the need to be able to take care of ourselves as a country and not just Ghana, like I mentioned, West Africa and possibly also Africa. So Ghana has 30 million plus people, um, of course, very peaceful, like I mentioned, economically very stable compared to um, other African countries. And then to position yourself in Ghana means that you are going to be able to have access to West Africa and not just West Africa, but the 1.4 billion people that sit on the continent. And I'm sure that is interesting to any investor and we would like to speak further. Some of the investment opportunities I have mentioned already, um, they are in the manufacturing of vaccines. And of course, with the manufacturing of vaccines, anti-snake, anti-scorpion and co would come some um, structural builder. So we we'll need some people with um, insights in pharmaceutical buildings. Um, would come some equipment, some medical, um, some other lab regions, and so many other things, even in research and development that will be needed to set up a facility for vaccine manufacturing. 
Also, there is that quest to have more advanced medicines manufactured in the country. Um, currently, we don't have inhalers being manufactured in the country. I'm talking about inhalers, asthmatics, and then you know other advanced medical devices. Also, even products in certain advanced space oncology, patients, as the manufacturers are looking at them, going into products for renal medicines and a host of other um, things that are needed. And like I mentioned earlier, um, we don't manufacture most of our active pharmaceutical ingredients in the country. And so that is a whole basket available for investors who want to come into that space. I'm sure GIPC has wonderful incentives for anybody who is interested in it. And there's also the recipients that are added to um, the products to be able to formulate it into either a tablet syrup infusion or a vaccine, everything that goes into it, and also the packaging materials that are needed. Medical devices, I've mentioned, there's that opportunity to collaborate with us, and I would go into what the collaboration entails. Um, we don't currently have a, a bioequivalent center in the country, and for some of our products that is needed, um, there's that space to be able to invest a bit further to have bioequivalent studies done in the country. Currently, we take some of our samples to Europe, to Asia, specifically India, China. We take some to South Africa, but it's important to have um, one in Ghana, especially if we want to make Ghana a manufacturing hub, which is the vision of the country and the president has stated. And also with the fact that we are increasing the number of hospitals we have with Agenda 111, there would come the increase in pharmaceutical products and some of these products would need that bioequivalent study to be done. There are several support services, human resource and the likes, that um, have spaces for collaboration because sometimes we have to bring people from Europe, from Asia to help us with some technology. So it's important that um, we, we invite investors to collaborate so that we can have that local capacity to be able to make sure we are self-sustainable. The factors for some of these growth are very varying. I mean, you can talk about economic, you can talk about uh, the macroeconomic indicators, which are improving over the years, rapid urbanization, the increased healthcare expenditure, of course, with Agenda 111 will come an increase in expenditure. And also the increase in um, the incidence of chronic um, lifestyle diseases, either because now we are actively looking for it, or because we've improved um, our medical devices, um, there is a point where we are increasing the number of cases that are coming up for cancer, for hypertension, for diabetes, and that means that we need more medicines and more advanced technologies. We need to go a bit into research and development to be able to improve that space. Practically, uh, one may ask, how do I enter into the space? Um, there is the agenda to have contract manufacturing actually done by local manufacturers. And it is something that we are doing currently for some of the importers who import either from Europe or Asia, so that gradually we can reduce some of the imports. And also to be able to partner with some of the local manufacturers. When it comes to partnerships, you can aside measures and acquisition, which is available. You can also look at them. Um, um, the, the franchise and shareholding, or furthermore, contract manufacturing. I'm sure we'll go into details as and when required, but I think I'll end on the note that there's after, there's a room for us to grow and get better. And um, there's that opportunity for us to be able to serve 1.4 billion people on the continent. And that means that more investors are actually encouraged to partner with local, especially the local manufacturers, so that we can have that growth. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Lucia, for, for that uh, really um, appetizing buffet of opportunities and, and money that you, you presented. Um, I'm sure that every investor would be literally drooling at, at these offers which you, you have presented um, from across the board. I mean, I, I, can, I can tell you what my bias is when you mentioned the anti-snake and anti-rabies and so, because I, I said I'm a researcher and I, I do actually um, research in snake bite. More recently, uh, I've been trying to look at um, aspects of anti snake venom. I'm actually working really closely with uh, researchers in, in Germany um, on, on, on snake bite. So that's also a very interesting uh, prospect of that linkage between how research can, can inform the industry, what the needs are, and then eventually going into the trials of these drugs and vaccines and so on. 
Um, but I, I wonder if it still stay here a little bit before I move into the financing side where I'll bring in uh, Mr. Gerald Solsky and, and Alexander Klein. Uh, but uh, based on, on a couple of the things you, you said, and what, what I liked a, a lot also about what he mentioned was how you're not only looking at what this means for Ghana, but, but the subregion, the West African subregion, and, and even beyond. And I think this is really smart because anyone who's done their homework looking into vaccine manufacturing, drug manufacturing, realize that the economies of scale are needed. And you just can't be focusing on Ghana only if you want to make it big. But what we're trying to do here is to show that Ghana is your hub. This is where you can come and set up your tent, pitch your tent, or build your house together with us, and we can do this together, not only for Ghana, but for the West African subregion. And I see Stephanie has also written in the chat box that we as delegation of German industry and commerce are also in constant touch with the GIPC and other government agencies. Please do not hesitate to contact us with questions if you want to enter the market or expand your business here. And with that, I want to come back to you, uh, Nana, Nana Dufier, uh, on this idea of not only uh, making Ghana a viable destination in itself, but also for setting up with an eye on the sub-region. If you could go into how the GIPC uh, dovetails with the West African Economic uh, Bloc, uh, ECOWAS, and then maybe also uh, with the AU, uh, NEPAD, and, and these broader and uh, Africa-wide um, organizations, institutions, and, and set up, which could be attractive attractive uh, to German partners, uh, German businesses want to partner with, with Ghanaian business and set up shop here in Ghana. Nana? Hi, uh, thanks for that. So I, I miss like um, the after agreement. I think we will find that, you know, these are very exciting times. One, because, you know, Ghana is where the secretariat is, um, but also because we as a country are looking in, are proactively looking at how to make an investment across board, you know, um, interesting for from an accretive perspective and also just to facilitate um, our exports, just sort of providing a conducive environment for exports of these um, products to different countries. And I think we've started liaising with, you know, the secretariats to find er areas of, um, um, basically how we can collaborate to effectively do this. Um, in terms of all the incentives that I mentioned to you, it's they're nothing new, right? Um, regardless of where, which sector um, you're sort of looking at, we do have, we've always had, you know, um, tax exemptions on plants. So medical devices would, you know, potentially fall under that. And even if, if they were produced here, you know, you would probably, you would have more sort of accretive or cost savings um, from both from a raw materials perspective and also from, you know, programs such as 1D, 1F, right? So you sort of, and, and that's what I said, it, it has to be a case by case basis. We've had, um, we have um, an umbrella called strategic investments where you could have unique opportunities for cost savings there as well from a tax perspective and from other incentives perspective right so it, it takes coming to us to have a conversation and then sort of looking at the different you know um opportunities that could be really um um sort of uh, um fleshed out so for instance we would find that you know i, I think was it um sorry if i got your name wrong um, the lady who, who spoke before, who, who was sort of talking about different um, so snake bites and, and, and different vaccines yeah. that, that, that are interesting. Um, sorry, Lucia, I know you, I know you, I know I've seen you right, somewhere, so I, I apologies there. Um, you sort of have to look at the market for these things as well, right? So I, I find, and, and with my investment background, it's always interesting when we're pitching all these things. But I was, I was, I was, th I always think about the market. You know, we have to look at the numbers. You have to look at, you know, um, the infrastructure for, you know, sort of exporting them. You have to look at the existing countries, what they support, what they are open to. Some of them have all these rules and regulations around taking, you know, sort of drugs from other countries. So it's a case by case basis. It's great to talk about, OK, let's export across Africa, you know, but when, when we sort of sit down and look at the numbers and we look at the real opportunities, I mean, you know, that's when you can really have, you know, sort of a, a conducive conversation. And that's what GIPC is there for. We have the research, we have the regulatory frameworks, we have, um, you know, sort of like, we, we layers with the different institutions so we can actually talk about, okay, what is actually feasible from an export perspective. Now, 
in Ghana, for instance, yes, we have a manufacturing gap around um, products, but there's also more of a demand for generics, right? So you could come up with all these like interesting products, but you might not get the consumption you're looking for, right? So um, that's why we sort of have to look at these things from a case by case basis. And, and that's what GIPC is there for, really. No, no, many thanks uh, for that, um, uh, Nana, for uh, throwing more light on, on some of the propositions that, uh, that Lucia made. Um, I'll be coming very soon to the, the financial side um, where we would we'll really explore what the financing opportunities could be from different uh, angles uh, so that people know where to go. Uh, but uh, Eric, I just want to come back to you again. At this time, uh, you know, with your hat as the CEO of MedTech Chamber, um, given all that has been presented so far, um, you, you, the opportunity is there. It's very clear. Ghana is a highly viable destination. But of course, uh, before you get to the destination, you, you've got to understand what it, what, what it takes uh, to get there. And the question is, uh, what are the strategies that uh, one must employ? What are the approaches? I already mentioned that Stephanie uh, did point out that uh, there is the um, the delegation of German industry and commerce, which is working uh, or closely in touch with the GIPC uh, to provide uh, the know-how. But uh, with your experience, what are just a couple of practical um, steps that one should take? Um, Nana Dufi just mentioned, you know, come sit down this talk on a case-by-case -case basis, of course, this is the way to go. But can you share some of your experience practically uh, regarding market entry strategies and approaches that can save time and save money uh, when German companies are looking at partnering with Ghanaian companies for investments in the healthcare sector? Eric? Yeah, thank you, John. Um, I think I would use the experience of Sysmex in Ghana. So. Maybe 10 years ago, we were working via a local distributor in Ghana. And in terms of financing with uh, MedTech in business, it's not only about having offices and people, but you also need to invest a lot in the installation base, which is usually on placement or leasing basis. Now, at some point in time, which was around 2013, 2014, Susmex would as the company registered an entity in Ghana to provide local services, i.e. supporting the local distributor. And through this, we were able to understand the market, understand the needs and what is what the requirements are from the points of company registration, GIPC, the end user, the ministry, the regulators and in 2015, we decided to go a full-fledged Sysmex company, i.e. owned by Sysmex Europe in Germany. So we, we sell direct today to all clients in Ghana and we provide all the services. In addition to this, we have um, an academy to help build capacity in terms of training, not only healthcare personnel in the labs, but also doctors and specialists and not only in Ghana, but also in the sub-region. So we established the Sysmex Academy in Ghana, in addition to our direct affiliate business here, and we offer this capacity building across the sub-region. And this has really helped improve the healthcare delivery in terms of managing the equipment and also managing the labs. So our experience is mainly to come understand the regulatory environment, understand the business environment and what are the real needs of the people. And also it's much more better if the company comes in as a partner to a local Ghanaian company or comes in as a full innovator company with Ghanaian leadership. So this is our experience so far. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, no, thank you very much, Eric, um, for, for those submissions. And I must also thank you again for all the support that you do provide um, to those of us in the research community uh, with uh, very innovative uh, you know, financing mechanisms and arrangements uh, for um, the equipment that we need uh, for our research. Um, 
I want to also uh, now move specifically to the financing aspects of things um, because the, mon the money really is at the heart of this and uh, the, the, the financing, innovative financing mechanisms, whether it be uh, credit facilities, whether it be grants, whether it be advanced market commitments, whatever side of things, uh, there will be need for financing both from the Ghana government side, from the local business partner in Ghana, but most importantly, that, that injection of, of, of the cash from the, uh, the German partner also in, in, in you know, partnering uh, to, to boost whatever activity may already be existing or to set up fresh de novo, as you mentioned, um, Eric. And with this, I'd like to uh, turn the conversation to uh, uh, Mr. Alexander Klein, as well as Mr. Gerald Kosowski. I'd like to start uh, with you, uh, Mr. Kosowski, and you worked since 1997 uh, with the GIZ, um, and you hold a Master of Business Administration, um, as well as a BA in Social Work, and you've worked uh, for over five years in South Africa, and then in Rwanda, and then in Tanzania, and now you're here in Ghana, so you really understand the African setup. Uh, but today the focus is on Ghana. I'd like to ask you, in your work with the GIZ, uh, what would you advise, uh, well, should I say, what, what, what would you say are the opportunities available for German businesses to partner with Ghanaian businesses within the healthcare sector? Uh, what, what, what support is the GIZ able to offer and, and, and what uh, what do you think uh, should be the approach for, for the German businesses who uh, would want to, to partner? Yes, uh, thanks a lot, Dr. Amwasi, for the nice introduction. Um, first of all, I would like to support strongly the, the statement of uh, GIPC, Nana Addo, but also from the statement from Luisa, uh, Lucia. Um, that in general Ghana is a very attractive investment opportunity in Western Africa. It's a very stable political country and it's also running a lot of um, support to private sector investment and enhancing the private sector in general. And therefore it's really the place to go when it comes to market growth, etc. And it's now the time to go to because particularly in the health sector, the government is now putting a high, very high emphasis on it. And uh, therefore, really, uh, uh, the government, Ghanaian government is interested in winning uh, international partners to invest in Ghana and to partner with uh, Ghanaian companies here in, in Ghana. And uh, there are a lot of measures to support that. Um, ourselves from the German side, um, we have um, in, in German Development Corporation, we, one of our focal areas is the sector of economic, sustainable economic development. And we have a huge portfolio there, primarily addressing job creation and the creation of better jobs, but also training and supporting private sector development in Ghana. And we are running programs from vocational training to private and financial sector development. But we are also, and that's um, relative new supporting um, the uh, trade um, with Ghana. And one of our projects is a, a project supporting the African continental free trade area, and uh, particularly the sec secretariat here in Ghana, but also um, with respect to implementation in Ghana. So how can we implement the African continental free trade area in running successful exports from Ghana to the neighboring countries, but also all over the continent. And we also are supporting a program that's called Alliances, or we have a program called Alliances for Trade, where we partner particularly with private companies on topic of customs and ease of um, export regulations, etc. And again, addressing this idea of uh, using Ghana also as a kind of hub for the whole continent, and um, <clears throat> just as an example. Um, we're now talking um, about the topic of health and uh, the health sector and the private sector in health. Um, we have, um, um, I would like to mention four, uh, no, one area and four programs that we are running. One thing is, first of all, 
We have excellent networks here in Ghana, in Germany, and in Europe. And it's um, so for, for private companies approaching us, we are very closely working with the GIPC. We are closely our political partners, the Ministry of Finance. We have lots of cooperation with the Ministry of Trade and Industry. We are cooperating closely with the African continental free trade area. So there's a lot of potential that just from this side, but also with the private sector and also with the, uh, um, uh, the German Chamber of Commerce here in Ghana. So it's um, also this event now is one is a part of our cooperation with the German Chamber. And um, so to tap into our networks is one of the big advantages. And it's not only in Ghana, but it's also in Europe. Huh? So when it comes to addressing European companies, addressing German government institutions, address, addressing universities in, in, <laughs> in, in Germany, yeah? that is the, uh, we, we are offering um, our networks also to you as partners. Um, we have um, some instruments available that are particularly supporting uh, investments and um, I want to quickly talk on development health, um, then invest for jobs, which is a program on job creation, then the, uh, from the financial side, the KFW investment for employment facility, and finally on the coalition for health. Um, I'm not uh, talking on um, um, the instruments from the DEG because my colleague is coming later on and introducing those. So uh, let me quickly start with um, some of our examples. So um, in Developed for Health, we have a, it's a global program that we are running um, and that it is a vast, vast experience. It's all this cooperation with the private sector. Together we are trying to achieve development goals and in Ghana, in the health sector, we have currently 11 projects running, and um, um, it's the private sector also has to pro provide at least 50% of the investments. Measure can, measures can range from 100,000 euro to 2 million euro um, public contribution, and um, yeah, it's um, we, we run projects with a lot of international companies, but also with Ghanaian companies in this field. It's from malaria prevention to, um, for example, local production of ventilators, etc. And <clears throat> we have a huge growth in this sector, and we are really encouraging you to approach us. You can run um, or enhance the sector even further. Then the special initiative on training and job creation. And, um, um, there we are offering advice and support for employment generating business development. So one of our key partners, for example, is the AHK in Ghana. Um, with the G20 Compact with Africa Investment Partnership and the Marshall Plan with Africa as its starting point, a special initiative on training and job creation under the brand Invest for Jobs aims to promote sustainable investments that have a high impact on employment in Africa. The special initiative represents hereby a paradigm shift in development cooperation that represents a starting point for planning and designing support measures which the, with which the private sector needs. Companies are invited to get on board a partnership that will support actively the investments, project or sourcing in high potential African countries. This creates genuine win-win situations, business opportunities for companies, and valuable jobs in our partner countries. In Ghana, the special initiative aims to create through GZ Ghana at least 6,800 decent jobs and improve working conditions of 15,000 people. And um, we have um, the following areas of intervention, advice on expert topics and general conditions. We uh, up, uh, running technical studies in certain topics. We uh, are providing context and matchmaking, making, and we are also providing complementary financing. Um, then I would like to go on <coughs> um, 
with um, the, the Investment for Employment Facility of the KFW. This is a pretty new instrument, also run under the Special Initiative on Training and Job Creation. Um, the investment facility aims to support the creation of decent employment opportunities in Africa. It does so by offering co-financing grants for new investment projects with a high job creation impact. Um, the the uh, IFE will officially launch, launch its first call for proposals in Ghana on Thursday, the 1st of April, 2021. In, in, uh, the day after tomorrow, so it's uh, very close. Um, so um, the IFE provides co-financing grants for new investment projects with a high job creation impact, and um, target groups are companies, not profit organizations and public partners that can apply the grants per project range between 1 million euro and 10 million euro. And uh, the contribution from the applicants ranges from 10% to 75% of total project costs. It's really, we have a lot of programs supporting SMEs or micro uh, enterprises as well. And this is really a project that is supposed to, uh, to make the big difference in supporting bigger investments in infrastructure leading to job creation. Um, finally, very quickly, I would like uh, to talk on about the Coalition for Health um, initiative. It's a concept for a novel partnership with, private, with the private sector to, to sustainably strengthen, strengthen health systems. Uh, C4H has the objective of strength, strengthening health systems in developing and emerging countries through long-term partnerships. C4H is a coalition from part of partners from the German Development Corporation and government, private sector, academia, civil society, and government ministries, agencies, and partner countries to strengthen healthcare delivery in these countries through the setting of joint goals, leveraging synergies, and creating partnerships to implement common activities in the health sector. Ghana is the first partner country for this initiative, and I'm very happy that Roland Böde was also on this call this morning, who's for me somehow the face of, um, of this initiative. And uh, although the launch, the launch is still outstanding, the official launch of the initiative, um, but we are al already identifying needs and potentials um, in Ghana in the health sector together. So with the meetings that we had, I think, uh, last week, I guess it was Friday, and um, we are also now uh, already talking about vaccine production in Ghana and looking, for example, at technical support in this field and um, going beyond that also the question of feasibility studies, etc. So there is a lot, whole range of um, projects available and I'm uh, targeting on one hand the German private sector, I can only uh, tell you that we are ready to, uh, to be approached by you with all the different measures that we have, but also to the Ghanaian side and particularly also the Ghanaian private sector, um, we would like to cooperate even further, even beyond what we have done so far. Thanks a lot. Well, thank you very much, uh, Gerald, uh, for really that exciting um, overview of uh, what GIZ is able to provide um, to the private sector um, from Germany, and not only that, but also in Ghana, uh, by way of support for setting up uh, collaborations, partnerships that would um, invest in business within the healthcare sector. I think it's it's also excellent that we have uh, Mr. Alexander Klein, who is with the DEG, with which he's been for the past 10 years um, as a senior investment manager in DEG's corporate strategy and development policy department. Um, as an economist, he has been responsible for global country risk monitoring and led DEG's uh, country strategy analysis on business potential in several of DEG's frontier markets. So we're really privileged to have you on this panel 
uh, to speak directly um, to uh, German businesses uh, regarding how uh, they can uh, set up and what is available via the DFG for them uh, by way of investment um, or partnering with uh, companies in Ghana uh, uh, for uh, the healthcare sector. So, uh, Mr. Klein. Yes, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Amoazi. Um, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. And good afternoon, my um, uh, fellow uh, panel colleagues. Um, I hope you can see and hear me. Dr. Amoazi, please tell me if otherwise. Yes, please. It's going well. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you very much. OK, thank you very much for giving me the um, opportunity to uh, talk about DEG and um, what kind of financial solutions we offer and to give you a, a short picture of our health portfolio globally. Uh, before I jump into our financial solutions, um, just for those who are not aware or familiar with DEG, I will give you a background on uh, uh, who DEG is and what we do. And then uh, I will I'll give you some details about our um, financial products. And a, a third, I would give you uh, just a few aspects of our global health uh, portfolio. So starting with DG, um, DG is uh, the private sector arm of uh, KFW. Um, we had that already today, KFW, the German Development Bank. Uh, we are operating uh, since 1962 in um, um, emerging markets worldwide. Uh, but we finance uh, only private uh, companies and uh, how we do that, I'll come to that um, in, a, in a minute. Um, we have a, a, a substantial portfolio of 9 billion euro um, in various countries, various sectors. Um, uh, what, what strikes me most always is that only a fraction of that is actually German business. Um, uh, because most of uh, German uh, uh, FDI is limited just to a few uh, countries, and uh, we we really uh, all of us have have to uh, work on uh, promoting uh, foreign direct investment of German companies in Africa. And I'm I'm, I'm very happy that all of uh, us are, are um, working on that. And so uh, thank you all to those who set up this conference. And uh, this is really a great uh, step forward. Um, so talking about our financial solutions. Um, OK, so there's the regular uh, DEG financial options. And we have the Africa Connect, let me call it speedboat option, plan B. Yeah, I'll come to that in a, in a, in a, in a second. Um, the regular uh, DEG financial options are twofold. Uh, so we can provide loans, no grants, loans, and we can provide equity, which would mean we become a shareholder in a in a in a in a company. Um, the the loans um, and the equity volume, total volume, investment volume, can be up to let's say thirty million euro. The tenor. Um, of the loan tenor or the duration of our shareholding can be up to, let's say, eight to 10 years. These financial options, loans on the one hand, equity shareholding on the other hand, are open to all companies operating in Africa. So it can be a local company in Ghana, uh, it can be an I don't know, international company coming from I don't know where, and it can of course be a joint venture, yeah. And of course, it could be a German company, yeah. Um, so all uh, the the only precondition is that it needs to be private, yeah. It needs to be a private uh, a company, and uh, uh, that's that's more or less the only precondition we have. And then of course, yeah, we need to talk about the individual uh, sector about uh, loan interest rates and whatever. You know, finance is complex, um, uh, um, but we have a great portfolio. I'll come to that also in a, in a, in a second. And we have uh, um, uh, successfully uh, accompanied many, many companies. And uh, we, would, we would love to enhance 
and expand our, our portfolio in uh, Ghana. Um, now, the, this is quite a large sum, uh, 30 million uh, euro, that is the top, of course. Um, it can go down to 10 million uh, euro, but even this can be a lot for uh, some projects, some companies which are not suitable for this uh, amount of uh, funds to absorb, being able to absorb those. Uh, and uh, so we have another uh, facility which is called Africa Connect. That is a new government funded uh, facility, uh, but this is only open to European German uh, uh, companies, companies operating in Africa, which have a shareholding or strong angle, uh, strong connection to Europe or Germany. Yeah? Africa Connect as the second opportunity um, is uh, slightly, or not even slightly, it is fundamentally different to our regular DEG um, uh, solutions. Uh, it is capped at 5 million, up to 5 million euros. Whereas DEG starts at 10. So this is capped at five and it can go down to one million. It has a very attractive uh, um, um, interest rate. It has a long tenor of seven years, two years grace. Uh, but the fundamental, but the fundamental uh, beauty, if I may say so, about it is it is an extremely streamlined efficient standardized process so we can be really fast yeah um i don't want to promise too much otherwise i, I would create a lot of pressure on my end but uh, uh uh it is a question of weeks and not of month compared to our regular deg financing because the regular deg financing needs to adhere to several regulatory uh, preconditions and uh, due diligence and a lot of things we have to pay attention to. Africa Connect, we try to focus on, on, on the absolute minimum uh, uh, to make life of our clients uh, more easy. And therefore, it is a streamlined process and we can get this done in weeks. And uh, also compared to the other financial, uh, financial options, we don't take collateral. So normally, as you might know, that the uh, every every loan, for example, uh, you're, you're taking mo most of them uh, uh, take uh, an underlying collateral. We don't take that at, at uh, with Africa Connect. So long story short, Africa Connect, the streamlined autobahn uh, uh, um, um, uh, highway solution, yeah, kept at five. Then you have the uh, regular DEG financial solutions, 10 to 30, either loan or equity. So who needs to be our partner? That brings me more or less to our global health portfolio. What, of course, what, what we would need is somebody, a sponsor of the project, who has sufficient sector know-how, who knows what, what, what he's doing, yeah? And uh, uh, who also, of course, um, from an incentive point of view, needs to have skin in the game, which means uh, this sponsor needs to provide equity. Yeah? Uh, roughly, let's say 35% of the, of the uh, project, envisaged project needs to be uh, covered by equity by the sponsor to align our interest that if everything falls apart, it's pain for all of us. Yeah, so that is a, an, 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 in, an incentive for us to uh, uh, fight for the success of, of, our, of our companies. Um, okay, that's, that's about the financial options in a, in a nutshell and just a few aspects because I think I'm running out of time. Dr. Amwazi, please tell me if I do so. Um, just a few aspects, very short, on our global health uh, portfolio. Um, uh, so let me see. Um, we have about like 20 projects globally. Um, unfortunately, I have to say, Africa is absolutely 
that's really uh, absolutely underrepresented. Um, we we are focusing on healthcare, um, on hospitals. I have, I have to say, and on pharmaceuticals. Um, but what, what we are also missing, what we are we are not very strong, absolutely not, in manufacturing of medical equipment. Although there are great, absolutely great companies uh, um, um, pr producing lo locally, but we, we didn't come together yet. Uh, we, we just hear to uh, this morning that B. B Brown is uh, thinking about setting up a production shop in, in, in Ghana. So manufacturing of medical equipment we are we are not strong there yet. We have a couple of hospitals, and of pharmaceutical production uh, worldwide, um, and we would be absolutely happy to expand uh, that portfolio in Ghana. Uh, so let me see what uh, um, when when it comes down to hospitals, uh, we rather focus on the tertiary uh, sector specialized ho um, hospitals. Uh, because we understand that the primary sector, the the primary um, hospitals, well, covering basic needs, that that is that is often state owned, and and that is not the sector we are um, we are active in. We think it is very important to have a, a revenue mix for hospitals, meaning insurance on the one hand, government funding on the other, and as a third. Of course, third party, it would be out of pocket uh, spending. Ah, and before I forgot, Eric uh, um uh, mentioned in his in his um, um, remarks that we lack, for example, leasing options or leasing solutions um, uh, for medical equipment in Ghana. Yes, sure, that would that would also be an option. Yeah, you know, having a, a leasing company. Um, um, uh, offering uh, operational leasing of medical equipment, that would be perfectly fine as well. Going back to the uh, hospitals, so uh, specialized hospital day clinics, that would be our speed spot, revenue mix of insurance, governments, out-of-pocket spending, and of course, just recently, supply chain turbulences, that is an issue um, um, uh, uh, which has to be taken care of. And uh, then, of course, it's people. It's always people, yeah. Um, uh, um, having the right doctor, uh, doctors, the right medical personnel, which needs to be trained, um, incentivized and everything, that is also, of course, very, very crucial. Eventually, in a nutshell, and then we'll stop talking, um, uh, what we offer, of course, uh, complements uh, the wide range uh, of, of uh, out, outstanding uh, um, services. Uh, all my colleagues from the chamber, the German chamber, and from GIZ are offering with their network and and uh, all all the advisory services they they can provide. So we would like to to click. Uh, into this chain, yeah, and uh, com complement the service, uh, the services which are available for uh, local and also international and German uh, companies. And with that, I guess um, I would stop talking and um, give it back to you, uh, Dr. Amwazi, for any question. No, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Klein. Indeed, uh, with this panel, it's, it's your classic case of. Maybe saving the best for the last because this is really exciting uh, prospects and opportunities that have been uh, presented, both uh, by way of the landscape in Ghana uh, from the Investment Promotion Council and then from pharmaceutical manufacturers and then to the MedTech Chamber. And now we see the funding um, opportunities from Germany, uh, both for German companies and for Ghanaian companies. Uh, really exciting what you presented, Mr. Klein, especially the Africa Connect. I mean, do you think it takes barely weeks, uh, no collateral required? Uh, what I perhaps missed was uh, what the uh, repayment arrangements and interest rates are. Of course, this may be on a case-by-case -case basis, but if you could just maybe skirt on that issue a little bit, I'm sure there are a lot of companies that would be interested in knowing uh, what this is about. And then I'd like to come specifically to you, Lucia, um, uh, around uh, this issue that has been raised both by GIZ, our funding opportunities raised by GIZ and also by uh, the DEG.
Uh, so, Mr. Klein, do you want to touch on that? Yes, um, Dr. Amawazi, th thank you very much. Um, okay, uh, interest rate, that is difficult. Um, interest rate is an art. Yeah, <laughs> um, we will find some something that works. Yeah, um, so Africa Connect starts at one percent for a euro loan. Um, uh, we would we would see half yearly installments repayment uh, schedule. Uh, so Africa Connect starts at one percent interest rate all in um, half yearly installments. Um, the tenor is as I said up to seven years and we could in, in include two years grace period yeah so the first two years you only pay in interest rate and no principal yeah um and then the following five you will you will make the uh, um, equal in, in installment payments of the of the principal um plus the um interest rate uh, on the deg um loan and equity side I can't give you an interest rate um, uh, and the repayment schedule can also be uh, absolutely flexible. It can go from monthly repayment to bullet structure, meaning having the repayment really at the end yeah, and before only um, 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 uh, um, interest rate payment. Like for example, Ghana yeah, uh, just recently last week uh, started, I understand the, the roadshow for the uh, two zero government bonds, yeah, which is wow, this is really great news. And I and I hope this will be a successful uh, roadshow, which would be the same structure. Yeah, you pay interest rate and then you have a bullet repayment at the, at the end. So, in a nutshell, again, DEG that will be tailor made. Yeah, that will be tailor made to the project, to the client, to the sector. Uh, interest rate, of course. Uh, we have to cover the risk of the package, yeah. Uh, but it will suit the project, yeah. Of course, that. So we we want to make this happen eventually. Like GIZ in the in the chamber, we we want to have investments in Ghana, yeah. So uh, we will set up some something that suits the project. Africa Connect. It is rather strict. It, it's starting at one percent, and it's half yearly in installment, two years grace seven years total tenor. Thank you very much. Really insightful, Mr. Klein. And I just want to come uh, back to you uh, before I, before we had, uh, that's uh, Gerald Gosowski uh, with GIZ, before I come to you, Lucia, um, maybe I'm, I'm trying to buy into your mind and ask a question uh, because I, I have these two options, GIZ providing this development support more in the grants kind of fashion, and then uh, DG providing the loans as a business person, you may want to sort of dance between the two and take advantage of, of, of both. So if I would ask you, Mr. Gzowski, how would you see a, a business uh, leader in Ghana or in Germany trying to dip both into GIZ and then into DEG? What would be sort of the, the sweet spot to hit where one is eligible or able to access both in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a profitable way, if I put it that way? It may be a difficult question, but forgive me. Thanks a lot. Um, yeah, in general, um, we are uh, supporting, a, uh, we call it business support desk at the um, German chamber. And um, this desk serves a kind of, as a kind of contact po point of contact for companies that are interested in cooperation. and. Uh, they know exactly our portfolio and they could then approach us and uh, concerning the right program to address or the support that we could give to an initiative. And um, therefore, this would be really the address to go to. And um, therefore, we also, in cooperation with the AHK, we were running, running this event. And um, then it depends really uh, are other companies looking for technical support? Is it more or less, uh, yeah, are they looking for financial support? When it comes to financial support, it's quite often the KFW and the financial cooperation, but also the DG that could be of interest. Um, but nevertheless, we are also supporting financially projects in different sectors and we could also and are also already doing that in the health sector with our development programs and 
yeah, that could be depending on the angle the partner company is coming from. Um, we could then see what is the, the, the right um, yeah, project to approach and the right channel to use. And also, you know, with our just saying that our cooperation that we are running with GIPC, cooperation running with the African Continental Free Trade Area. So we have also a lot of information and um, could also um, yeah, serve as this kind of um, yeah, point of yeah, entry and see yeah, that we can provide information that uh, companies are looking for in a certain area. Thank you. No, thank you very much, uh, Gerald, for that. I asked this question because, uh, of course, Mr. Klein was also very emphatic on being eager to collaborate with the GIZ, and I can see that it is also the same on your end, uh, willing to have Ghanaian and German businesses working hand in hand both with you and with the DEG. I think this is really exciting prospects, and uh, I just want to come to you, Lucia, as I as I wrap up, maybe in about two minutes, if you could. Um, just maybe speak from your perspective as the executive secretary of the from the Scale Manufacturers Association, um, what additional support you may want from the uh, GIPC uh, and then also uh, from the uh, GIZ uh, DEG uh, setup. What, what kind of additional support beyond what you've heard uh, would you like to see? So this is for you, uh, Lucia. So thank you, and I think I want to commend the people that organize this program um, for bringing such very great minds to actually discuss this issue at this time. So finance is a big issue, and I can see that it's been dealt with. Um, I am looking forward to speaking to the various um, speakers about how we can advance this conversation. Apart from finance, of course, there is um, technical support that is needed. So we have um, 15 companies now that are setting up new facilities and they don't just need finance for the structure. They would also need to be helped to be able to attain GMP good manufacturing practices. Um, some of them will need equipment. Um, equipment, if they can pay cash, if they can get money to pay for it, that's fine. If they can get some credit for it, that would also be fantastic. So that incentive of collaborating with um, German companies possibly who have the equipment to be fantastic. Um, another way to help us is guaranteed markets. So the German companies that are in the country who possibly have products that are doing well or they need to be able to sublet it out, outsource that production and to be able to help build local capacity so that we can do contract manufacturing would be fantastic. So we're looking forward to the contract manufacturing of infusions, either for Ghana and then beyond. Um, we would also be looking at if they can come on board, bring in the ideas as shareholders, um, diverse, diverse um, other incentives and markets. So I think that beyond this conversation, we will want to sit down further with GIPC to have a conversation and also with other stakeholders, of course. With GIPC, some of the expectations will be on how we can get exemptions quickly and probably not go through a very long process. And also possibly we've started engagements about um, strategic investments, how they can probably reduce it, you know, as in the, the um, criteria, so that more and more of our companies can fit in there, because it's not every company that usually does that amount of investment, that's about um, uh, $50 million. So it's about always creating that platform to be able to engage further. And I would love to, have the stakeholders again on a, um, a table to discuss what the next step should be or what can be done to be able to grow the partnership so that it's a win-win not just for local manufacturers but also for investors and companies abroad. Thank you. No, thank you very much for that, Lucia. And if there's one refrain I hear across the board, it is come, let's talk. And it looks like everyone's doors are open and they are tailor-made solutions and options for Ghanaian. German companies uh, to collaborate uh, within the healthcare space. I'd like to thank you very much for your time. Uh, the panelists, uh, Nana Dufier, uh, Gerald Gisalski, Alexander Klein, um, uh, Lucia, yourself, and, and Mr. Eric Osse, um, and also to all of you who have joined us. Um, thank you. I believe this has been so insightful and will lead to 
many great things uh, moving ahead. Uh, we have just about three more minutes to go, and I'd like to sign off here as your moderator, um, and we'd like to hand over to the organizers, particularly Stephanie uh, Simon uh, from uh, the private sector development and projects of the Delegation of German Industry and Commerce, the AHAKA here in Ghana. Stephanie, over to you. Thank you very much, Dr. Amwasi. Um, I also like the opportunity to thank you because, um, as uh, many might not know, you came um, from Kumasi. You are a very busy person as well. You came from Kumasi just to help us uh, organize, moderate this event. So we are very grateful you did that for us, for, for our cooperation with GRZ. Uh, so thank you for that uh, very much. Um, all the participants, all the speakers, all the exhibitors, uh, it was a great uh, event. It was uh, one of the first virtual, fully virtual events that we also organized. So it's also something new and we are very glad that we were able to bring together um, those um, uh, brains and uh, those uh, key speakers in one in one day, maybe some figures that we collected uh, over the day. Um, and during the three panel discussions and also the welcome and keynote, we uh, had 22 speakers present. Um, we had participants, 372 participants in the course of the day. Uh, the exhibition booths we mentioned it before are 36 and the visitors of the booths visits were 1,800. So for the exhibitors also very important that uh, visits have been taken place. Please everyone note that the exhibition booth will still be open this week. We will see um, how busy it, it also is and how receptive the companies are, um, still are. Um, maybe we are able to open this longer. Um, thank you also. I mean, uh, an event like this is nothing without the team behind it. To all the team members of the delegation of German industry, specifically um, Akofa, um, who's been supporting us, and then from the delegation Richard, Andrew, and Gloria, and all the others who were instrumental in making this event happen. As I've mentioned in the chat function before, please do not hesitate to contact us um, either directly through email, also through the networking lounge um, if you are interested. Um, speakers are, the profiles are all there, they can be contacted there. Um, if there are any questions, we are open. Ghana is open for business. And with these words, I would like to close. Um, thank you again very much for participating. I wish you all the best and um, thank you very much. Bye-bye.